Picture this, friend, the White House lawn, but instead of the usual Secret Service guys pretending not to watch the squirrels, there's a rotorcraft coming in for a landing. No engine on the rotors, no helicopter downwash, just a flying windmill drifting out of the sky like it's lost its invitation to the party. This wasn't a stunt gone wrong. It was Harold Pitcairn proving to America that the future of aviation might not have wings at all. And today, we're looking at three of his strangest, boldest creations. The PCA-2, the PA-18, and the PA-36. These aren't helicopters. They aren't airplanes. There's something deliciously weird in between. I'm Bill, and this is Buffalo Airport. Let's dive in. Today we're heading back into the wonderfully odd early days of rotary wing aviation, when airplanes were still made of fabric, engines leaked more oil than they burned, and one man believed that the flying machine of the future should spin like a ceiling fan on a caffeine binge. We're talking Harold F. Pickerin, aviation air, rotary wing evangelist, and the man who tried to bring auto gyros into every American hangar, born in 1897 with Pittsburgh plate glass money. Pickerin could have spent life lounging around a mansion. Instead, he dove headfirst into fixed wing aircraft, airmail operations, and eventually flying windmills. When his male pilots kept bending perfectly good airplanes in perfectly bad weather, he went searching for something safer. That search led him straight to Juan de la Sierva's brilliant invention, the auto gyro. In 1929, Pickerin bought the U.S. rights for $300,000, an eye-watering sum for something that, on paper, had the aerodynamic capability of a spinning porch ornament. But Pickerin made it work. In fact, he made it spectacular. In 1930, he won the Collier Trophy, and to accept it, his test pilot Jim Ray casually landed a PCA-2 on the south lawn of the White House. First aircraft to do it. Try topping that with your Amazon Prime delivery. So let's break down three of Pickerin's marvelous flying oddballs, each representing a different chapter in his crusade to make autogyros the next big thing. The PCA-2, the Celebrity Windmill. This was Pickerin's big, flashy, look-at-me autogyro, certified in 1931, the first rotary wing aircraft in U.S. history to get type certification. The PCA-2 was the crowd-pleaser of its day. Big right whirlwind radial? Check. Rotor big enough to shade a tennis court? Check. Screaming paint schemes for maximum public attention? Double check. Its 330 horsepower engine hauled a massive 45 foot rotor and up to three people, but don't think this thing flew like a baby helicopter. Nope. It still relied on little wings, ailerons, and elevators to steer, while the rotor simply spun politely overhead, minding its own business. Companies loved these things. They were basically flying billboards before skywriting became a thing. Champion Sparkplug bought one, painted it up, and sent it on a 6,500 mile tour like a rotary wing rock star. And then there is Amelia Earhart. Yes, that Amelia. In 1931, she attempted to be the first person to fly a PCA-2 across the United States. Except, she wasn't. John M. Miller quietly beat her by nine days in his PCA-2 missing link. Amelia found out only after landing in California, which is pretty much the 1931 version of checking her phone and realizing somebody already posted your big announcement. She then tried to claim the round-trip record, but three spectacular crack-ups later, she called it quits. But the PCA-2's wildest moment came from Godfrey Webster Dean, who actually looped the thing. A 1932 looped the loop in an auto gyro. Test pilots watching were horrified, fully expecting the rotors to stall, fold, or fling themselves into Canada. Instead, the aircraft survived the maneuver. Probably because nobody told it. It wasn't supposed to. The PA-18, the Beach House Commuter. After the PCA-2, Pickerin wanted something personal, an autogyro for the wealthy weekend pilot who didn't want to deal with the riffraff on the roads. And so, in 1932, the PA-18 was born. Smaller, lighter, and powered by a cozy little 160 horsepower Kinner radial, the PA-18 was perfect for the pilot who wanted the convenience of a car, if cars could drop onto beaches and ignore traffic. One PA-18 in particular, serial number G-65, became Harold Pickerin's own personal ride. He rented a cottage on the Jersey Shore and would simply hop into his autogyro, fly 80 miles from Philadelphia, and land right on the sand in front of his beach house. Move over, Uber. 
Later, that same aircraft was bought by Anne West Strawbridge, who adored it so much she refused to let it go off the war when the British wanted PA-18s converted into submarine-spotting PA-39s. Her loyalty saved it. Almost every converted PA-39 was sunk by a German U-boat. Years later, when Jack Tiffany restored the aircraft, now affectionately called Isabella, he discovered something wonderfully weird. Pickerin's engineers had intentionally drilled weak points into the vertical tail so that if the rotor ever struck it during low-speed maneuvering, the fin would fold down like a hinge instead of tearing the whole aircraft apart. A breakaway tail fin. You have to admire engineering that anticipates your mistakes with such affection. The PA-36, the beautiful last stand. And now we come to Pickerin's final big gamble, the PA-36. Developed in the late 1930s, this was the sleek, futuristic autogyro Pickerin hoped would finally win over the U.S. government. This machine ditched the stubby wings entirely. No ailerons, no elevators, just a rudder in the back and a fully tilting rotor head up front. True direct control. This was the autogyro stepping boldly into the helicopter age. And then came the showstopper, the jump takeoff. On July 26, 1940, Pickerin demonstrated it to the public, spinning the rotor to insane RPM on the ground, popping the pitch, and launching the machine upward like a spring-loaded toy. No runway, no roll, just up. Workers at Luscombe, who built the fuselage, nicknamed it Larson's Loon, likely because they didn't yet have the vocabulary for revolutionary rotorcraft. But the PA-36 had the terrible misfortune of being born into a political knife fight, while Pickerin fought for the federal funding under the Dorsey-Logan bill. One little change in the wording, from autogyro development to rotary wing development, opened the door for the true helicopter. And once the helicopter arrived, the autogyro's sunset began. Hey, I'm just the historian, and I couldn't make this stuff up if I tried. And that wraps up another tale from Aviation's Stranger Side. Until next time, keep your eyes on the skies. Hey, hey, Susie Q, what's cooking with you? Your teeth look whiter than new, new, new. My teeth aren't new, but my toothpaste is new Pepsodent. Get with it, kids. New package, new flavor, new formula, too, means brighter smile for me and you. You'll wonder where the yellow went when you brush your teeth with Pepsodent. The new formula with IMP gets teeth much whiter. You can see it cleans the stains and film away while Irium bites too. Decay. You'll wonder where the yellow went when you brush your teeth with Pepsodent. The taste is new, so fresh and clean. That new taste really lasts, it's keen. And while it makes your smile a rave, it also makes your breath behave. So start going steady right away with Pepsodent. Get some today. You'll wonder where the yellow went when you brush your teeth with Pepsodent. Pepsodent, Pepsodent. Pepsodent.